It's time to have your say. Welcome back to the Q&A. Ask SCW will begin answering your questions straight after this. Coming up in today's show, going to be talking about WWE, AEW, Impact, and much, much more. Your top topic today will be Liv Morgan, your SmackDown Women's Champion. How would I book her as champion? And of course, SummerSlam plans will be discussed as well throughout a lot of the women's division in WWE. As well as that, going to be talking WWE Clash of the Castle, my dream main event for that show. And of course, as well, AEW, the Royal Rampage. What was my fault? of that concept of a match type and also we're talking about one of my favorite match types from the good old times of lucha underground so that's what's coming up today if you want to be involved on the next q a then drop a question in the comments below here on youtube leave the hashtag ask scw or you can follow me on twitter instagram facebook all should come on the screen right about now don't forget to like share and subscribe to scw as well and let's get started now with our very first question this week which comes from Martin Lorenzo Carrillo. How do you feel upon Liv Morgan winning the SmackDown Women's Championship? And what would be the right way, in your opinion, to handle Liv Morgan's title reign? Terrific question to kick things off this week. And I tell you what, it's great to see Liv Morgan as the SmackDown Women's Champion. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, no more. Of course, she won money in the bank, cashed it in on the same night, of course, on Ronda Rousey to win the SmackDown Women's Championship. And of course, it goes full circle of the calendar year where she was just looking for an opportunity to get into money in the bank. She'd gone on then from a full calendar year onwards with rivalries with Carmella. Of course, she had the uh, Raw Women's Championship program with Becky Lynch, of course, at the turn of the year was actually one of the main matches on that show. She had a good showing in the Royal Rumble this year. She's been going for the Women's Tag Team Championships in the team with Rhea Ripley. Of course, that team broke up. She went in for a feud afterwards. And now she's gone on to Money in the Bank to actually win and cash in one full year later. It just goes to show deep down, WWE at times does listen to its fans. It's the fan support that got behind Liv Morgan that said, this girl deserves a chance. And do you know what? She's taken it with both hands. And of course, now we've got the payoff for it. One year later, she's won the championship. And of course, the fans can say it's worth getting invested in people we want to cheer for. So it's great to see it all around. But how does it go from here? And that's the big question, like you said. The main thing that WWE need to establish, regardless whether this is a long title reign or a short title reign, is that Liv Morgan doesn't fall back down the pecking order when she loses the championship. It is the actual opportunity now to make her a top star in the women's division for many years to come to make her feel like a big deal as champion so in my opinion she shouldn't lose the championship at the first given opportunity now there are rumors already going around through big dave dave Meltzer saying that uh, her versus ronda rousey for the smackdown women's championship is the program that is looking likely for SummerSlam. Now, if you look at them in a one-on-one -on -one match, obviously, I think a lot of people would say, well, we might want Liv to win, but we'd see that Ronda Rousey will probably win the championship back. For me, that would be potentially a mistake to go down that route. As we discussed on the Money in the Bank review, which of course is available now on the channel, if you haven't seen it already, I will link it to the end of this video. I was joined by NX Steve. He suggested the idea of getting her established as champion by going through some lover card programs just to kick things off, maybe a shot see Isaiah Lee for me I agree with that but I would say do it on Smackdown television rather than SummerSlam perhaps build it up then so she's had a couple of wins couple of defenses under her belt be a fighting champion from the very off that way as well if she loses the championship in a couple of months down the line well she's defended it a lot she put everything in there rather than being these heel champions that say I'm only defending this once a month for in Roman's case when I fancy showing up. When it comes to SummerSlam, I would go for a big time matchup. It's one of the biggest shows of the year. And of course, to be the, the champion at that point, you know, you want to put it in a big time match. But I don't want to fall in the same trap as Nikki A.S.H. because she lost her championship to Charlotte Flair last year at SummerSlam. And obviously, I don't want that happen here for Liv Morgan. But I do think with Charlotte returning... You could do a triple threat match. There's definitely going to be one more Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair match on the cards. I think that with, you know, Ronda writing Charlotte off TV, Charlotte's going to want revenge. And the fact the championship's not in the picture on return at the moment, I think would make things a bit more accepting for fans. So I'm thinking we've got the same match again, the same program for the championship. Let's mix it up and freshen it up. So what we can do is we can have a triple threat match with the three ladies, including Liv Morgan. And Liv Morgan then can get out the other side with the championship because Ronda and Charlotte would cancel each other out. It's kind of similar to the Bianca situation where she was defending against Asuka and of course Becky Lynch at Hell in a Cell earlier this year. That's one way you can go down. You could go down with the fresh matchup. Simply just have Liv versus Ronda or Liv versus Charlotte 
Like I said, there is a fear factor she could lose the championship. But I suppose if, for example, it is Ronda versus Liv, maybe it's not the worst idea because if Charlotte returns at SummerSlam to cost Ronda Rousey, then, well, that just gives Liv Morgan a clear pass to go through to what happens after that and Ronda and Charlotte can continue their feud without the championship. So that's definitely a couple of ideas I would look to do. I would want Liv Morgan to be a champion for a few months in WWE at least if it was up to me, especially with you know her being the face of the SmackDown Women's Division. There will be a WWE draft coming up. The rosters will probably freshen up around Clash of the Castle. I don't know if it's going to be before or afterwards, but the last couple of years, it's been October. So if you can get to that part, then obviously you've got then Liv Morgan could be on there with Bailey, Alexa Bliss. Other people could be coming over, could renew a rivalry with Becky Lynch, which I mean, they could even do on Raw this evening. I wouldn't be surprised as Becky was the one that could have grabbed the briefcase. And I think that Liv will get a send off on Monday nights if she is going to be moving to Friday nights full-time going after this because let's be fair Smackdown does need a bit more talent in that women's division currently so let's see how it's going to play out that's personally how if you wonder how I would book it I would say give us some big wins be a fighting champion defend that title regularly have her against Charlotte and Ronda at SummerSlam in a triple threat match they cancel each other out or have Charlotte return at SummerSlam to cost Ronda the match Liv remains champion then we get a draft and then we can freshen things up and maybe around Survivor Series time could be a good time to drop the championship at that point and then she can try and build herself perhaps Royal Rumble season to get back in the championship picture for Wrestlemania but as I said at the start of this question the most important thing is to make it feel like that Liv Morgan belongs in the title scene so if and when she will eventually lose that championship however long it is from now she will still feel like a top talent and she doesn't fall into the obscurity we don't want to see her in the 24 7 championship picture or somewhere on the undercard take this as an opportunity make a new star make it where Liv Morgan is a household name for many years to come in WWE next question come from a noob and co with Becky Lynch failing to win the women's money in the bank and her fall from Grace storyline continuing will Becky Lynch continue her feud with Asuka in some sort of stipulation match at SummerSlam Becky Lynch, her character work has been an absolute fire. I'm absolutely loving the direction. It was the right move for her to not win money in the bank this year. And to see how she reacted after that, I think you are right. I think that the the rivalry with Asuka will continue. Of course, uh, Liv Morgan is the one that cost her on this opportunity, but with Liv going to SmackDown, of course, Asuka is the one that has been the fawn in her side for quite a while now. I don't see Becky going for the championship on the Raw side. Neither do I see Asuka doing it either. They both went for it hell in a cell. They'll have a stipulation match at SummerSlam. And I do think a stipulation match is the right way to go. Now, just to say, answer your question with the Raw Women's Championship, I think that Carmella could be going for it again. I'm hoping that'll be weekly TV. But Rhea Ripley also is someone that's off TV right now. Uh, hopefully, she can come back from injury. She can get her match that she was supposed to have at Money in the Bank. And if she can't come back, well, Bailey is waiting in the wings. I would like to see Bianca versus Bailey finish that rivalry before Bailey was taken off TV. But going back now to Becky versus Oscar, what stipulation match would I choose? Loser leaves Raw. You can't get much lower than that. Becky right now is in a situation where she is at rock bottom. The only way it can get worse for her is that she can't even be on the show that she is currently on. So I would like that stipulation to fall in place. Now, does Becky win or lose that match against Oscar? Well, that remains to be seen. If they can get a situation where Becky and Seth will go on to Friday nights when it comes to the next draft, then that could work where Becky could lose this match. She has to be off TV for a few weeks, doesn't know what to do of herself. Maybe she goes on social media doing storylines on there. Oscar gets the big victory, of course, beating Becky Lynch and getting rid of her off the show. That puts Oscar in a bit more prominent position to go for the Raw Women's Championship again. And then we won't just keep getting rematch after rematch after rematch because these two have been feuding for months now. They've had, obviously, previous feuds as well. It's been a great feud to this point. And I think a loser leave Raw match, I think, would work really, really well. So that would be the stipulation I would put in place if I was booking it for SummerSlam this year. Next question coming from the NWC show, Nonstop Wrestling Chat. What would be your dream main event at Clash at the Castle? Brilliant question this one, and call me predictable, I would go with the obvious. That's right, Roman Reigns, your tribal chief, still the unified Universal Champion, defeating Brock Lesnar at that last man standing match at SummerSlam, not being cashed in by Theory either, would be going against Drew McIntyre. And just like they did at SummerSlam in 1992, 30 years on, I would have, just like British Bulldog did, have a boxer accompany him to ringside with the United Kingdom flag. The British Bulldog had Lennox Lewis, Drew McIntyre can have 
Tyson Fury. It will even up the odds as well should the Usos want to get involved. May even be a sports center moment, folks, if you imagine him trying to knock out one or both of the Usos. Heyman going ballistic on the floor. Drew McIntyre hitting that Claymore and getting the one, two, three, finally getting a victory over Roman Reigns and becoming the brand new WWE Unified Universal Champion. That's my dream main event. That's also how I would book it. WWE, if you're watching, you're probably not. But if you are, book it, make it happen. Switching things up now of our next question. Underground Temple now here with it. He would like to see AEW and Tony Khan adapt an Aztec Warfare type of match from Lucha Underground. The match begins with a number of participants in the ring who were then eliminated either by pinfall or submission. I always like that twist to Battle Royals. As would I, I used to love Aztec Warfare in Lucha Underground. It reminded me of the old WCW NWO Revenge game from Nintendo 64. Yes, I'm showing my age, but you know what? It's worth it on this one. You used to have that we could do the Battle Royals, and of course, back in those games, you, you couldn't have more than like four people in the ring at once, but you could always change the rules of the match type. You could have pinfalls, submissions, you could have no rules, no disqualifications. You used to be able to reach over, get weapons over the bar barricades as well, get your baseball bats, get your steel chairs. It used to be a well fun time. It pretty much was what Aztec Warfare was. And for me, Lucha Underground, I used to really enjoy Lucha Underground back in the day. It was always my favorite when I heard the episode was coming up. Yes, I mean, the match was like 45 minutes and some people would get eliminated really quickly and say, but they're one of the top guys. Why are they only for a few minutes? But for me, it was always a fun match. I always really liked it. And uh, yeah, for me, I would love to see it come to AEW. I think it would be a lot of fun to see. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I've never always been the biggest fan of the casino battle royale it's just i don't think it's been the greatest thing that's ever been created i think that it's a bit of a cluster when so many superstars come out in one interval and then it's five minutes it's better and a lot cleaner like what they've done on rampage with the royal rampage having the two rings there having that new structure the way they did it 10 superstars in one ring 10 superstars in ring two and then when it comes down to the final two just like world war three back in wcw as well they'd go and meet they'd fight off and then of course the winner would then be the one that's the last person left standing for me it was a lot cleaner smoother nice to watch it was almost a bit like Raw and SmackDown as well with the red ring and the blue ring. The blue ring was kind of treated like SmackDown has been treated in the past, like 2005, 2009, sort of getting the lower end of the deal. But for me, this was a really fun battle realm and I hope that it will do this again. Maybe it only works when they have the two rings, of course, which means it would be the time for when they do blood and guts but maybe they can do a show if it can fit an arena where this can be the main theme of a weekly tv show or even a pay-per-view i think it's really really fun of course like we say it's the concept like the royal rumble but it also works like wcw's world war 3 as i've mentioned already thought it was a lot of fun really liked it and as for Aztec Warfare, yeah, why not bring it in? You'd probably have to change the name up just a little bit. But AEW are quite creative with that. And I think, personally for me, it would be fun to see. So, yeah, I, I'd be down for it 100%. Last question come from Silk, a.k.a. NXT for us now. What do you think of the first Women's Ultimate X match? Of course, that took place earlier this year at Hard to Kill. And I think it's one of my favorite matches this year, to be brutally honest. The ladies absolutely knocked that one out of the park. You couldn't tell it was a first time ever. Now, I know Jordan Grease had been in this type of match before, but the other ladies certainly hadn't. And there were some really good high spots in this match and death-defying as well. Alicia Edwards and Chelsea Green doing the cross bodies uh, off uh, each side of the turnbuckle with the X structure as well to the floor of the ladies waiting. Uh, Lady Frost even doing a moonsault later in match from a higher angle into uh, the ring aisle as well which is really really cool uh, we saw some really fun spots as well Kendra being brought in from Alicia Edwards the kendo stick when she was going across the structure she was speared off as well by Rosemary uh, there was like a sky high with Jordan Grace and Tasha Steels and there was a good race as well towards the end of this match where Jordan Grace was knocked off and it was Tasha Steels and Chelsea Green they were both sort of fighting for the X and then of course Tasha managing to get it I thought that the ladies did an outstanding job in this match and with being honest as well it was the right winner at that time you were building and making a new start in Tasha Steels. She went on as well to become the uh, you know the knockouts champion as well for a lengthy period. Also, she's only recently just lost that championship at Slammiversary in what was the first ever Queen of the Mountain match, which also was a fantastic match, by the way. Highly recommend checking that out. Uh, but it's good to see this match has uh, just gone on in full on YouTube as well. So anyone who hasn't seen this match, I will actually drop the link to this at the end of the video, so you can go and see it for yourself. Really good match. Really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, like I say, one of my my favorite matches of the year if I'm being brutally honest.
But that's all we've got time for this week for Ask SCW. Just to give a shout out as well to NXT. If you join me for Money in the Bank 2022, the review, why, in our opinion, WWE got it right. Liv Morgan, of course, winning the SmackDown Women's Championship after, of course, uh, winning Money in the Bank. And, of course, Theory winning Money in the Bank as well. Of course, there's a big big load of conversation on Fury winning it and why we think it was the right move so go and check that video out if you haven't already more videos will be dropping on the channel this week so make sure to keep things SCW like the video if you've enjoyed this one as well share it with a friend subscribe to the channel as well and drop a comment in the comments below on any topics that have been talked about during this video I can't wait to interact with you and of course if you want to just interact in general something pro wrestling feel free to drop involved I'm happy to have a conversation of course you can always drop a question with the hashtag Ask SCW, I know, to include it in the next video and give you a shout out as well. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day. Check out these videos on the side of your screen right now. I'll see you soon. You're on SCW. Take care.